So we're here at the National Conference for Media Reform. Um, how would you define media reform? Media reform seeks to have uh, protect the free and open internet, which has helped us diversify the media, seeks to break up the media monopolies, seeks to get the Federal Communications Commission to make sure that minority voices can get licenses to broadcast. And we, of course, at in media reform, we work to strengthen community media, grassroots media, like the kind that you're producing. So why is um, media reform important? The reason we need media reform and a, a more vibrant and more diverse media system is so we can have a, great, a stronger democracy where people know what's going on in the world, know what's happening uh, around them, and can participate as active citizens. The people that own the media today, I think, are, you know, they're just as happy if everyone's out on the sidelines, you know, because we're easy targets, you know, passive, easy targets for advertising, which unfortunately is the main purpose of corporate media. It's not the main purpose of what you guys do, or what community radio does, or what local video people do. The exciting thing when I see young people like you uh, making media is we're in this environment today where everyone can be a producer of media content. That wasn't the case 20 years ago. You know, great equipment to record and produce content, it's so much cheaper now. And with the internet, you can distribute this content. You can find an audience. So it's all changed as long as we keep a free and open internet. And that's one of the major demands at the Media Reform Congress conference here. Um, I want to go back to something you said. You said you uh, used to work for mainstream media sources. Can you talk about um, like the difficulties um, that were posed while you were working for them? Um, and I guess more specifically um, around the panel you spoke for, like around the topics of war? Yes. Um, I was on-air contributor at CNN and then Fox News Channel and then MSNBC. Every place I was, I realized that the corporations that owned the network had certain prerogatives. When I was at CNN and I was on a show called Crossfire, which was sponsored by General Electric, which isn't just one of the most powerful corporations in the world, it's one of the most powerful political institutions in our country as a lobbying group. I knew that being critical of General Electric was not acceptable on CNN. Um, I ended my career at MSNBC where I was terminated three weeks before the invasion of Iraq and I was basically terminated along with others because we were doing what journalists are supposed to do, which is question, you know, ask questions of the government leaders before our young men and women are sent overseas to kill or be killed. And that wasn't allowed. And we were all terminated. I worked for the Phil Donahue show. I was also on air. We all were let go because they didn't want questions being asked. And uh, so our country blundered into an invasion of Iraq. Uh, perhaps 100, 200, 300,000 innocent Iraqi civilians ended up dying. Thousands of American uh, young people ended up dying in a war that journalism did not question because the owners of our media didn't allow us to do our jobs. That's why independent media is so important. Uh, when I was at MSNBC, we were told that if we ever had uh, an anti-war voice, we had to have two pro-war voices on that same segment. If we had two experts who were like on the progressive left, we had to have three on the conservative right. And again, everything I'm saying has been totally documented and unrebutted by management because the day after we were all terminated and the Phil Donahue show was canceled and it was the most watched program on that channel, it's almost unheard of that a channel cancels its most watched program. But uh, the next day, an internal memo leaked out from NBC and they said that they were worried about Phil Donahue because they didn't want him to represent NBC while our competitors on television are waving the flag at every opportunity. Now, if you're a journalist, your job isn't to wave flags. Your job is to ask tough questions, especially when the country is debating whether to go to war. And we weren't allowed to ask questions. That's why I'm a big believer in independent media. We need diverse media. The corporate mainstream media, I'll be blunt with your audience, has failed us. 
Thank you for that insight. So what are you doing as an individual or as um, the co-founder of FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy for Reporting, um, to work on media reform? Well, we try to get media, our simple slogan is, don't take the media lying down, which means if you see bias, if you see panels on television news that are exclusionary, that aren't fully diverse, complain about it. Uh, the other aspect of not taking the mainstream media lying down is create your own media, which I know you do and, and the other young people here are doing. So uh, that's what FAIR was about. I started that in 1986 and I'm at Ithaca College with the Park Center for Independent Media and it's the same task. How do you get young people active about producing different kinds of media, giving different voices the microphone? How do you do that? And and that's what we're about at Ithaca College, is continuing that kind of work. Uh, and this conference here that you're lucky to be attending, the National Conference of Media Reform, it features some of the greatest journalists there are today working in independent media, some great journalists who work in local community media, and young people like you that are working in media uh, while you're still in high school, or even starting in junior high. So. Uh, I think that's the beauty of this conference, is we can all share notes with each other. We can talk about the obstacles we all uh, have in common. How are we raising money? How do we stay on the air? How do we get our, our, our media content circulating on the web better? So this kind of thing, th this is a conference full of thousands of people that are media active. And I'd, I, I'd like to think that when we started FAIR in 1986, we started a process, it was somewhat of a spark that led to these media reform conferences. Great, um, and yeah, it's, it's been a really great conference for me too. I've learned a lot and I've met a lot of really great people. Um, so thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, I just want to encourage uh, folks like you to keep producing content and, and figure out how to get bigger distribution of your content. The only way to counter this problem where half a dozen big conglomerates control so much media is if thousands of smaller media outlets blossom and you know there's a as as people turn away from mainstream media there's this concept of a rising tide lifts all boats and if we, you create a little media boat and you're creating some media content in Albuquerque uh, and you share what you're doing with the youth collective in Denver, that's how we learn how to build up media from the grassroots. And a democracy needs media that comes from the grassroots. It can't come from the top. Then it's more totalitarian when you just have a few voices coming from the top. Thank you. Thank you.